Hello, welcome to another episode of Built by Ben. We're carrying on with this drinks unit. In today's episode, we are gonna be looking at finishing them towel units. Nice, we're gonna be doing that wine rack. And we're gonna be finishing the doors as well. So thank you for tuning in again. Thank you for all the recent support. I've had loads of subscribers in the last couple of weeks. Um, still trying to bang these things out as quick as possible. So um, <laughs> sometimes I might get two in a week. Sometimes I might get two in a month, but they will come, so don't worry. If you haven't yet, get over to my Instagram, support me over there as well, because it all helps. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, and don't forget to tell a mate about it. See you on the next one. Right, so we jump straight into these, uh, finishing these tower units then, guys. Um, I hope you like this style of voiceover. It works best for me because when I work, I have music on, so I can't put the original audio file uh, into these videos because YouTube don't like it. They tell me that I'm copywriting people. So we can't have none of that because then I can't monetize the videos and I can't earn from YouTube, which means I can't afford to make them. So this is the way we do them. Um, let me know in the comments if you don't mind, if you do like the setup of these videos. Um, I can adjust them in the future, obviously. But anyway, you can see me now, we're just adding a top to these tower units. If you remember from the last episode, they haven't got a bottom to them because we're having a glass worktop on this drinks unit. Um, so all we're doing there is just measuring the width of it. Uh, the width of it should be the width of the back piece as well. Uh, so if you use that as a guide, then that's usually always right. And then once you've assembled your unit with the backs and the sides, you can then measure an exact sort of front to back measurement as well to get your height of it. And you can see that I've just um, just cut three of them in there. I'm just smudging the glue off now. So you want to make sure you get plenty in them. Um, but you'll be able to see once I get out of the way in a minute. We're just screwing that in from both sides on the tower units because the wine rack will cover one side and the other side will just be pointing to the wall and covered by a fillet piece so we didn't have to worry too much about screw holes on this one uh, again just using the specs MDF screws um, so I become an Amazon affiliate last week so if you want any of the bits in my videos that you see on there you're not sure what they are or you can't find them on Amazon or you know anything like that just let me know what you're after um, head over to my Amazon shop, I'll stick a link in the description of this video. And um, what I've done on there, or what I've tried to do, I've started doing it, is I've put a section on my Amazon shop for pretty much every video that's, that I've published on here. Um, so basically, on the one that says drinks unit, There'll be the spack screws, there'll be my Makita drills, there'll be Festal plunge saw. Um, and like I said, if you can't find something that you're after, let me know and I'll get a link sorted out for you. Um, and Amazon tell me that I've got to tell you guys that I earn a bit from that as well. They do give me commission to sell these bits. You pay the same price as you would anyway, so it doesn't make a difference to the price. Um, but I earn a little bit and it helps me make these videos. So everyone's a winner. Um, so you can see we just put them tower units on there and then we get to the fun bit which is this wine rack. Um, took me way longer than I care to remember to build this thing. Um, they're quite tricky. It doesn't look like there's a lot to them but you'll see from this video that there's quite a bit involved. So the first bit is just to um, make a normal carcass but we're not overhanging the back because this sits a lot more shallower than the tail units anyway so it leaves a gap behind it and so it's just a flat backed unit again all stuck together with PVA and then drilled in 
with the MDF back screws. And then we'll just turn it onto its front here and secure all of the back. Make sure that's nice and strong. Obviously this thing's going to be taking quite a bit of weight. Uh, I think we can get 22 bottles in this all together. Um, can't quite remember now but um, yeah it's obviously 22 bottles of wine. It's quite a lot. Um, but you'll see this when we build it. We're just um, we're just going to stick the sort of horizontal shelves in now. Um, I had a bit of an idea how I was going to build this when I started, but I must admit that I made it up sort of as I went with how I was going to secure it all. And I decided to go for the sort of half lap grooves um, sort of system. Uh, I suppose you could have cut all of the little pieces individually for your verticals, but I decided to make it a lot stronger by doing it this way. Uh, it did take a hell of a lot longer, but I just thought that you could then get a fixing into every single part. So you can see there I've just got the verticals there all as one piece and we're going to cut them grooves up to halfway to allow for the horizontals to go into them. What I've done there is I've just put a strip of MDF at the back there just so that the saw doesn't go too far through the MDF. Um, so the bit that I'm cutting is actually a lot more forwards um, than it was before if you were just sitting it on the back of the bed. Um, and what that allows it to do is the blade can get more vertical if you like. Um, I know a blade is circular but it lets the cut go a lot deeper. You see all the dust flying off there. Um, if anyone needs proof that these vacuums don't get 100% of the dust, there it is. I think it looks a lot worse than it is because of the um, the light catching the dust there. But yeah, these hoovers, although they're sort of M-class rated, you probably only get about 80% of the dust that comes out. But they are meant to catch most of the silica dust, which is the stuff that harms your lungs. So maybe the stuff just floating in the air there is just the MDF dust and not the actual harmful stuff. So you can see me just checking there that another piece of MDF is going to go into the grooves. And obviously decided not, so we're just widening that one up a touch. It's maybe only half a mil, but you need to be so accurate with these because if it fits too loose, it's going to look rubbish at the front. And if it fits too tight, it will probably start to split the MDF. Um, so you've got to get these bang on. Apologies for looking like I'm going to rob you on this video. It was absolutely freezing cold. Uh, the warehouse that I work in is not the warmest of places at all. There is absolutely zero heating in there. Uh, so what we're doing there is just using a spade bit right at the um, right at the tip of the groove that we're taking out just allows us to pull that main section out there and then do the rest with a chisel just to square it off um, just like you would on the corner of a hinge plate or something like that and it's important that you keep weight down on this part as well because um, when you when you hit the chisel through there MDF obviously isn't as good as like a good hardwood or a, or a solid pine and what it'll do if you haven't got something solid underneath where you're hitting It'll just blow the back out of it um, and you end up with this massive sort of exploded part of MDF on the back of these things. So yeah, just make sure you've got that nice and flat down. See me checking it there just to make sure. Um, I must point out at this point I'm making it look hard because that mallet that I've got is not the heaviest of mallets at all but um, you can see here just testing out that the 18mm goes in there. 
that fin piece obviously doesn't go in there, but that is to um, just simulate another beer. You can see it's a nice tight fit, not too tight, but it needs to be good so that the front looks nice. Just a little trial fit there. You can see it's going to fit nicely. So that's the finished piece there. And then what we've got to do is do the two horizontal shells just to match them. So we're doing a lot more grooves in the horizontal shells. Um, and also we've got to do the rest of the verticals. And this is just a, a bit of footage to show how much work goes into these things. I think the wine rack on this unit probably took longer than the unit to build so <laughs> this gives you an idea So you can see we've moved on to the longer sections now, the horizontal shells. Um, it's obviously involved a hell of a lot of um, precision cutting. Uh, once you've been cutting for a long time on a saw you sort of um, get a really good feel for exactly where that blade's going to hit. But to be safe a nice little tip for you is just to edge it up to the pencil mark so start where you know you're not even going to hit the pencil mark and then just move the material very very slowly um, you know and keep making passes with the blade just to make sure you're getting right on that pencil mark um, never try and put excessive force on the material and push towards the blade because if the material does slip then your fingers will go with it so um, won't be recommending that one you can see here how tight the fit is um, maybe a touch too tight on that one but like I said that mallet isn't the heaviest so probably looks a lot tighter than it is um, so we're just slotting all of these pieces on and then the very very nice bit was this bit I thought it wasn't going to go in for a for a second um, but it was just caught on a tiny little bit of material you'll see here where it releases and there we go. I mean, there's nothing more satisfying than doing that and everything fitting. So you can see there, we've pretty much finished the wine rack. All we had to do then was just to put some fixings in the top and bottom and give the front a sanding. Um, again, just with the sander, you just want to run over it. Make everything as nice and flush as possible. Uh, I think I've got about a 240 grit on there. Um, you know, just to take away any tiny little discrepancies that you've got. Um, obviously building that sort of thing, you've got to cut every single piece bang on. And if you haven't got a CNT machine, it's almost impossible. So always expect to do a little bit of sand in there. Um, but overall, I was quite happy with it. And you'll see here, um, I've just attached some little sort of wings to the top of it. Um, don't tell h &S that I do this in my yard please, but um, you might want to get some help with this sort of thing. I was there by myself that day so I just had to crack on with it, but that was a bloody heavy unit that one. Um, there was probably about a whole sheet of MDF in that wine rack, so you can imagine that was about 25-30 kilos. As you can see it all just clicked in nicely, it was a good fit. Um, just making some tiny little adjustments to bring it all flush with the front, make sure it's all um, you know, looking good. Kicking the bottom of the unit back over just to make sure that all of the sides come flush. And then what we're going to do lastly 
is just uh, sort the doors out. So I'll leave you with this little bit of sped up footage. There is a full video on this if you want to see it. But uh, I'll see you next week for the install, guys. I'll try and get it out as quick as possible. Thanks again for watching.